Oma Jnana Timadandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Nena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha I'm extremely happy to be here with the most exalted devotees in the universe. Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Advaita Chandra Jai Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Advaita Chandra Jai Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Today is the appearance day of Sri Gadadhar Pandit, mentioned in the Gora Gona Desha Dipika, so it's a, a book that describes the crossover from Krishna Lila to Gora Lila. These are Leelas are going on eternally, simultaneously, and that the various Parishads or eternal associates of Lord Krishna are also to be found in Gaur Lila because if you look closely enough at Krishna Lila, you'll find Radha Krishna. And if you look closely enough at Radha Krishna, you'll find Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> because, uh, and, and how do we look closely enough? We look closely enough by following the Goswamis. The Goswamis are showing us how to look closely and, and look within. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a clue. And most people in the world don't have a clue. Why is it important to observe these days of the, the great Parishads or associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? It is our very process. In fact, the, the means by which we come to Krishna is by following the devotees, not by following Krishna, but we follow the devotees who are following Krishna. It's mentioned in code form in the nectar of instruction and um, completely uh, expanded in ex explanation within the nectar of devotion that the, the means for attaining Krishna Prema is to follow the, the devotees. Practically we say we're the das, 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 anudasa. That puts us in the fifth position. And if you put yourself in the millionth position of servant, the servant, the servant, a million times removed, then the paradox of Gaudiya Vaishnavism is that, uh, although that seems indirect, it's actually the most direct. So Srila Gadadhar Pandit uh, is arguably the most important of all of the associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Another paradox is that we don't hear extensively about Gadadhar Pandit within the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, or the Chaitanya Bhagavat. But actually, he's the intimate associate of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And of course, in general terms, we hear that all of the various expansions of Krishna in the Panchatattva of Lord Chaitanya are non-different from himself. They're absolute. And they are, Krishna, I should say, expands himself into these various forms for enjoyment. Ekubahusham. Why is there an expansion of many living entities? And why does Lord Chaitanya expand himself into the Panjatapha for enjoyment? Krishna is never alone. He's there with his energies. And this is also another hallmark of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. We recognize the shaktis of Krishna. Those expansions of Krishna are the most important to us. In fact, we emphasize that, or I should say Lord Shiva, who is Vaishnavanam Yatashambhu, the most exalted of Vaishnavas, when asked about the best kind of worship, tells his consort that the best kind of worship is Vishnu worship, but higher than that is worshiping those things and those people which are, who are in relationship to Lord Vishnu. So we get the most out of this. And Gadadhar Pandit is known to be uh, Radharani. 
But there's a twist to it because Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Radha and Krishna combined. So then who is Gadadhar Pandit? And that's a very esoteric topic. And uh, it can be gone into at great length. But I want to give some more... I want to talk a little bit about, since we're, the, the morning's almost over already, I'll talk a little bit about Gadadhar Pandit and his relationship with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. From the Adi Lila 1.41, it is said, Gadadhara Pandat Panditadi Prabhura Nija Shakti Tan Sabara Charani Mora Sahar Sahasra Pranati. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the internal potencies of the Lord, of whom Sri Gadadhar Pandit is the foremost. He's the foremost. In Gora Lila, when Gora manifests his identity with Narayan, his Shaktis are his wives, Lakshmi Priya and Vishnu Priya. When identifying with Krishna, his Shakti is Srila Gadadhar Pandit Goswami. And I was referring earlier to Lord Chaitanya as a has how he has expanded himself. And this verse from the Adi Lila 115 says it. Pancha tatvat makam krishnam bhakta rupa swarupakam bhakta avataram bhakta kyam namami bhakta shaktikam. I offer my obeisances unto the Supreme Lord Krishna, who is non different from his features as a devotee, devotional incarnation, devotional manifestation, pure devotee, and devotional energy. The Lord Chaitanya appears in five forms, and there's no difference between them. The distinctions arise due to his desire to relish different devotional flavors, and that's important because then when we hear of these relationships that Krishna has with his devotees, and relationship means there, there are various kinds of mellows or ways in which they relate. It's not just one way through on reverence, but there's loving anger. This is unique to what our line of a teaching about our relationship with God. In some traditions of bhakti like Islam, which is a bhakti tradition, because they're praying. They're praying to God five times a day. They, they face Mecca and they're praying to a supreme. They're not praying to themselves. They're not my bodies. Oh, some get a little out of hand these days. <laughs> Granted, but, <laughs> but Islam itself is a bhakti process because there's prayer, and they're offering prayer to the Supreme. Uh, one slight drawback is that they don't have a clear idea who the Supreme is, nor can you talk about it. In fact, I'm risking my life right now <laughs> mentioning that. <laughs> mentioning that. <laughs> But in any case, uh, if, you, if you try to describe the Supreme or you make some image or something like that, that's forbidden. But, but that has a lot to do with the way that various theologies unfold in the world and, and how they get held back by various kinds of dogmas. In any case, we don't have that in Gaudiya Vaishnavism because there's a complete description of the personalities uh, including the personality of God and his relationship with his various devotees and the kind of emotions that they have. And this is vitally important. That unless you, you can awaken this love for Krishna, then you'll slip from your position because we're eternal. And we need love. That's what we really need. Liberation's not enough. Because we're eternal. And what are we being liberated from? The hurricane, as we just heard, of material existence. But we can't just sit still somewhere else. We have to have this loving emotion towards the Supreme Personality of God. And we find that in the devotees that come with Krishna to this world. That's part of the reason he comes. He comes, but he doesn't just come himself. Mirabai glorifies Krishna over and over, over and over again, but she only glorifies, she says, it's me and him, it's me and him, it's me and him. She never mentions the devotees around him. 
So hers is, is, we can tell from the taste of her bhakti that it's not in our line. It's not the kind of bhakti we have that we're expressing. Ours recognizes the shaktis and the various relationships that Krishna has with all his devotees. And that is uh, most important because the devotees carry that kind of devotion that we're looking for and they can give it to us. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. There is mention Garadhera Jivana that Lord Gora is the, the life of Garadhar Pandit. So Garadhar Pandit is the chief amongst the most intimate devotees of Lord Chaitanya from the commentary of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur in the Chaitanya Bhagavad. Gadadhar Pandit is the fountainhead of the Shakti Tattva and is thus present equally in Mahaprabhu's leelas in Navadvip and in Jagannath Puri. Gadadhar Pandit's home is Navadvip. Later, after sannyas, he goes to Totagopinath. He stays in Totagopinath. Devotees, and of course, he took sannyas there. What kind of sannyas? A Shetra sannyas. It means that he, he vows only to stay in one holy place and never leave. And the, so there are various vows, I understand. Some are for 12 years, some are for, for life. And you say, here I am, I'm staying right in this one place. We have a devotee coming here this next Wednesday who's not left, well, has vowed to stay in Mayapur his whole life and uh, has done so. This is the first time he's come out of Mayapur to the United States, I think, ever. And just reading about how difficult it was for him to negotiate getting on an airplane, <laughs> I can understand that he's, he is back half a century. He was waiting at the airport in Calcutta thinking they'd come get him or something and put him on the plane, but he was waiting for the completely uh, innocent to the ways of the world, Janani Prabhu. He'll be here on Wednesday, next Wednesday. He's bringing with him Lord Nityananda's shoes from Mayapur and also a helmet from Lord Nishingadev. It's, uh, it's, it's an event that's going on in many places all over the, the, the United States right now because uh, we're in the final stages. Ha, ha, ha of building the uh, TOVP and they're coming to uh, take the um, energies of the devotees all over the West. <clears throat> Radhajivan Prabhu, who is heading up the fundraising for this project, has said that he's approached a lot of very wealthy people for donations, but he said some reason they're not giving. I mean, a few are. Of course, Ambarish gave $25 million. Let me see what I got here. <laughs> uh, to help the... No, it's a lot, even for him. Um, to, to help build this project. But Rajiva is saying somehow he's going around and a lot of these very rich people aren't giving. And he said he, he had this realization, epiphany, that actually Lord Nitinan, Lord Chaitanya, they're not taking their money. He, they're giving the opportunity for everyone everywhere to, you know, like we do, go door to door. We, it's like, oh, okay, give us your change. You know, the guy brings out a whole jar. <laughs> it's like, take all this, $26.32. That's all I have to my name. You know, it's like, okay, you get credit. You're in the Sankirtan movement. It's eternal. You're set. So Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya are giving this opportunity. He wants his people, the ones who are going on Harinam, the ones who are going out distributing books and, and prasada have dedicated their lives to this, to, to have the opportunity to build this temple and to be eternally connected to it. That's why he's not taking so much money from all these rich people. That was his realization. So they'll be here on Wednesday night. So Gadadhar Pandit Prabhu took this Shetra Sanyas, and we'll hear a little bit more about this, unless I run out the clock talking like this. Um, Devotees and Madhurya Ras take shelter of Gadadhar Pandit. Others take shelter of Lord Nityananda. 
He came from what is now uh, Bangladesh. He was a brahmachari for life. He's noted for being very, very renounced. Everyone knew him, even since the time he was very young, and Adhar Pandit had nothing to do with the material world. In his uh, childhood, in Navadvip, he and Nimai Pandit had many sweet, uh, sweet pastimes together. One of them that's related in the Chaitanya Bhagavad. Of course, Nimai Pandit would go around town with a bit of a swagger, and he would challenge everybody. and say, what do you know? What did you learn? Let's hear something. And then they'd say something. He said, that's nothing. Let me, and he would cut them down. He would, he would challenge what they said, and he would defeat it. And then they would say, that's pretty good. And he'd say, no, I'll give you the opposite. And he would defeat his own argument and so forth. So at one point, it's mentioned how he met Gadadhar Pandit, and he asked him to give the definition of liberation. And Gadadhar Pandit from the Nyaya Shastra said, liberation means the final eradication of all miseries and Nimai's. No, that's not it. Inadequate. <laughs> and then he gave a brilliant explanation. Uh, which, which, and there was a crowd of people. Whenever he'd do this, there would be crowds of people would, would try to put their shoulders in and listen. What's he saying now? That's how attractive Nimai Pandit was walking around. Beautiful little Brahmin's thread across his chest, his dhoti tied just right. He, he was, looked like a walking Cupid. And he, he had the gait of a lion also, because he was fearless for, for any kind of debate. A lot of even the, the great pundits in Navadip, they were afraid because they have some status. And if somebody bigger than them would come, it's like, all right, I'm knocked down. But Nimai was fearless. He would challenge everybody. And even when the Digvijay Pandit, who was a real person, this is not allegorical, he was a real person walking around India, and he really was converted by Nimai Pandit. But a lot of the big, big pundits in Navadweep, they were th thinking, I think I have to go. I think my mom's calling me over <laughs> back in Uttar Pradesh. <laughs> And, but, uh, but they were thinking, like, let's leave Nimai here, because they started to think, maybe he could do this. So you can imagine the buzz around town, and whenever Nimai was saying anything, everyone would crowd in to hear what he was saying. So he had this loving exchange with Gadadhar Pandit and defeating him on the street. Of course, you'll find later, again, how much later, I don't know, but that Gadadhar Pandit had a very submissive nature. It was just like Rukmini. And we know the story in the Krishna book, which is my favorite, that story and all the, the, how Krishna approached Rukmini one day and said, you know, you really should have married someone else. You know what everyone's saying, and it's true, I, I, no one really knows my background. <laughs> how could you live with somebody like me? And I, I've done so many abominable things, and uh, you know, you should find yourself another husband. I'm really a loser, you know. And when, when she heard all these things, she fainted. She fainted. And then uh, Krishna, you know, picked her up, and he's like, I was just kidding. I was. <laughs> and then she gave a refutation of everything he said, point by point. She remembered each thing, and from Shastra and from deep realization, she would defeat it, uh, but in a submissive way. So Gadadhar Pandit had the same mood with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's recounted in the Chaitanya Charnamrita about how when Balabacharya, Balaba came to Jagannath Puri, and of course he's a great Acharya, and now his commentaries, even Prabhupada quotes from his commentaries and so forth, but, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he originally met him, had a very um, sweet relationship. Of course it was sweet also when he came to Puri, but it was different, because Balaba had this this feeling that he was a great scholar. And of course he was, but he had the wrong mood at first. And that was, he was challenging Sridhar Swami. He was saying, in the Bhagavatam, Sridhar Swami just gives his commentary according to the circumstances and so forth. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all his followers since, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur and everyone else follows Sridhar Swami in his commentary on the Bhagavatam. And Mahaprabhu, denied Balabacharya's uh, bravado when it came to his presentation of the Srimad Bhagavatam. 
And because of that, the devotees then also began to neglect Balava at that time. And Balava, being very disappointed, then went and took shelter of Gadadhar Pandit, coming and going from his house all the time. And he felt that was the way to be connected to the Vaishnavas there. But then Gadadhar Pandit was in a very compromised situation because he was then thinking that Balaba is, is not in favor with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or the, and therefore all the other devotees right now. But now Balaba is taking shelter of me, but he couldn't deny Balaba because first of all, he was a soft personality. Second of all, Balaba was this Brahmana, great personality, and he didn't want to just tell him to go away. And meanwhile, Balaba was taking more and more shelter of Gadadhar Pandit. So at that time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began to act a little coolly towards Gadadhar Pandit, and that really shook him up because he's so sensitive. Mahaprabhu, because of Bala was going to the house, coming and going, associating with Gadadhar Pandit, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and, and Balaba was a little bit persona non grata at the time because of these tussles they were having over the philosophy of the Bhagavatam and Balaba putting himself forward and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu knocking him down and so forth. Then Gadadhar Pandit became very, very disturbed that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was now neglecting him. And all the other devotees too. You know, if the leader <laughs> becomes neglectful, then everyone else like, nah, no thanks. <laughs> Whatever he said, you know. <laughs> and so he was, he was feeling uh, rejected, very upset. And then uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, called him back. In fact, Saru Damodar informed Gadadhar Pandit that Mahaprabhu has uh, rejected you like this just to get some reaction out of you. He said, why didn't you, you know, complain or something like that? And Gadadhar Pandit said, that's not, not my nature. I can't complain against Mahaprabhu. Whatever he says, I simply accept it. And when Mahaprabhu saw him, saw Gadadhar Pandit, he also said the same thing. And there, it's pointed out in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that this is the mood of Gadadhar Pandit as the Shakti. He had this uh, mood of uh, Rukmini Devi, that whatever the Lord would say, he would accept it. So, um, I'm going to read a section of the Chaitanya Charitamrita, and especially, it's called the Lord's visit to Vrindavan. The Lord tries to visit Vrindavan. Because in this section, yes, the Lord attempts, the Lord's attempt to go to Vrindavan. This is very indicative of the kind of relationship that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had, chapter 16 of the Madhya Leela, with his devotees. He wanted to go over Vrindavan, but they wouldn't let him go because they wanted him to stay. So they kept making excuses why he couldn't go to Vrindavan. You want to hear a little bit of this? Okay, this is Madhya Leela, chapter 16, the Lord's attempt to go to Vrindavan. By the nectar of his personal glance, the cloud known as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu poured water upon the garden of Godadesh and revived the people who were like creepers and plants burning in the fire, forest fire of material existence. All glories to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all glories to Lord Nityananda, all glories to Advaita Chandra, and all glories to all the devotees of the Lord. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu decided to go to Vrindavan and Maha. Maharaj Prataparuja became very morose upon hearing this news. The king therefore called for Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya and Ramananda Roy, and he spoke the following submissive words to them. Prataparuja Maharaj said, Please endeavor to keep Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu here in Jagannath Puri, for now he is thinking of going elsewhere. Without Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this kingdom is not pleasing to me. Therefore, please try to devise some plan to enable the Lord to stay here. After this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself consulted with Ramananda Roy and Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, saying, I shall go to Vrindavan. Ramananda Roy and Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya requested the Lord to first observe the Rathiyatra festival. Then, 
When the month of Kartik arrived, he could go to Vrindavan. However, when the month of Kartik came, they both told the Lord, now it is very cold. It is better that you wait to see the Doliatra festival and then go. That will be very nice. In this way, they both presented many impediments, indirectly not granting the Lord permission to go to Vrindavan. They did this because they were afraid of separation from him. Although the Lord is completely independent and no one can check him, he still did not go without the permission of his devotees. Then for the third year, all the devotees of Bengal wanted to return again to Jagannath Puri. All the devotees gathered around Advaita Acharya and in great jubilation, the Acharya departed for Jagannath Puri to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Although the Lord told Nityananda Prabhu to stay in Bengal and spread ecstatic love of God, Nityananda left to go see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Who can understand Nityananda Prabhu's ecstatic love? All the devotees of Navadvip departed, including Acharya Ratna. Did you catch that last part? He told him not to come and he came anyway. <laughs> this is the, the spontaneous mood of the devotees in Gauralila that you know, the rules are being bent and broken all over the place, but it's out of love, and this is allowed. Uh, you won't find this so much in Vaikuntha. The, the, the rules are the rules and so forth, but it, here, out of love, the devotees break the rules out because their love is so strong for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All the devotees of Navadvip departed, including Acharya Ratna, Vidyanidhi, Srivas, and that's not something we that's not something we imitate because we have to follow the rules. <laughs> All of the devotees of Navadvip, but I'll say one more thing about that. It is important to understand when to break the rules. I say this with great caution. But in the story of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Govinda, his personal servant, there's a specific example, and that is that every day, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had the same routine. He was very regulated in his devotional practice. And he would take prasad, and then he would go take a nap. First, he would lie down, and he would get massage from Govinda, his servant. And then after that, Govinda would leave Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's room, and he would go and take his prasad. And that's important because the servant has to be regulated if the master is regulated also. Other servants say, oh, I, I forgot to take, I didn't take prashad, so now I can't wash your clothes or whatever it is. So they have to be in sync. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu one day took, took Jagannath prashad. He went to his room, but he, 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 saying that he was tired, too tired to move, he lay down in the doorway of his room. So now Govinda came to give the massage to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he had to get in the room, but he couldn't because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was lying across the doorway. And therefore, he begged the Lord, please, if you could move a little bit, I could get in and give you a massage. And Mahaprabhu said, I'm too tired, I can't move. I said, please move, okay, I can't move, do whatever you wish. And Mahaprabhu went to sleep. And so Govinda broke the rules. You're never to step over a devotee with to speak of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But he had to do a service. So he lay a chutter over the transcendental body of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and stepped over. He came in, massaged the Lord, and then he sat there, although it was time for him to take his prashad. Mahaprabhu awoke, and he was a little bit angry. He said, why haven't you gone to take your prashad? He said, because you're blocking the doorway and I, I had to get in to give you massage. And Mahaprabhu said, then why didn't you go out the same way? Now this is another point, that he didn't answer verbally. He didn't, he didn't offer, well, you were lying in the doorway, and I didn't. <laughs> he didn't say that. This is the subtlety of a servant. A servant doesn't just come out and say, you know, it was your fault, I was, you know. He didn't say a thing, but in his mind he thought, I will, I will commit an offense to do my service, but I will not commit an offense for my own sense gratification. I'd rather fast. And that's how we decide whether or not to bend a rule, if it's for our service. Because in the, in the course of, of serving the Lord, there are many decisions to make. Uh, 
And, you know, if the spiritual master says, never, never bathe in that pond over there, and then you walk by one day after this, and the spiritual master's not there, and somebody's drowning, and he's like, sorry. My guru said, don't go in there. I'm, you know, good luck. <laughs> this is not spiritual intelligence. The spiritual intelligence will require this kind of discrimination to understand what is favorable, what is unfavorable, and so forth. Yes? Thank you for bringing this story. So one thing I, I could not understand, like why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was taking permissions from his devotees when we were reading now. So he, he without permission... He's he submissive to love. He's submissive to love. So although he's the independent supreme personality of God, it, even in, it's mentioned in the, Chet, in the Shri, Shri, Srimad Bhagavatam, Mayam Ragam Dayipti Taman Vadava. This is one line from a verse in the 11th canto of the Bhagavatam from Karabhajana Muni, which he's describing Lord Ramachandra, Lord Chaitanya, and Lord Krishna. And Maya Mrigam means for Lord Krishna that he was like a toy animal in the hands of the devotees. Like, you know this story when the devotees are moving to Gokula because there's a warning of danger, so they're on their carts moving, and it's mentioned how the gopis, they're playing with the little baby Krishna in Balaram. And they say, okay, you dance. You dance now and we'll give you half a sweet meat. <laughs> it's a supreme personality of Godhead. And you say, you dance for us and we'll give you half a sweet meat. <laughs> half a sweet meat. <laughs> and, and he'll dance because those are his devotees. He's submissive to his devotees. So he, he, uh, he loves them so much that he'll ask, ask their permission to go here and there and so forth. He's attached to them in that way. This is the sweetness of his relationship. All the devotees of Navadvip departed, including Acharya Ratna, Vidyanidi, Shri, Srivas, Ramai, Vasudev, Murari, Govinda, and his two brothers, and Raghava Pandit, who took bags of assorted foods. The inhabitants of Kalina Gram, carrying silken ropes, also departed. Narhari and Sri Raghunandana, who were from the village of Kanda, and many other devotees also departed. Who can count them? Shivananda Sain, who was in charge of the party, made arrangements to clear the tax collecting centers. He took care of all the devotees and happily traveled with them. Shivananda Sain took care of all the necessities the devotees required. In particular, he made arrangements for residential quarters, and he, and he knew the roads of Arissa. That year, all the devotees' wives, Takuranis, also went to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sita Devi, the mother of Chutananda, went with the way to Acharya. Srivas Pandit also took his wife, Malini, and the wife of Shivananda Sain also went with her husband. Chaitanya Das, the son of Shivananda Sain, also jubilantly accompanied them as they went to see the Lord. The wife of Chandrasekhar, Acharya Ratna, also went. I cannot describe the greatness of Chandrasekhar's love for the Lord. To offer Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu various types of food, all the wives of the great devotees brought from home various dishes that pleased Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. As stated, Srivananda Sain made all arrangements for the party's necessities. In, particularly, in particular, he pacified the men in charge of levying taxes and found resting places for everyone. Shivananda Sain also supplied food to all the devotees and took care of them along the way. In this way, feeling great happiness, he went to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at Jagannath Puri. When they arrived at Ramuna, when they all arrived at Ramuna, they went to see Lord Gopinath. In the temple there, Advaita Acharya danced and chanted. All the priests of the temple had been previously acquainted with Sri Nityananda Prabhu. Therefore, they all came to offer great respects to the Lord. That night, all the great devotees remained in the temple, and the priests brought 12 pots of condensed milk, which they placed before Lord Nityananda. When the combined, excuse me, when the condensed milk was placed before Nityananda Prabhu, he distributed the prasadam to everyone, and thus everyone's transcendental bliss increased. They then all discussed the story of Sri Madhavendra Puri's installation of the Gopal deity, and they discussed how Gopal begged sandalwood from him. It was Gopinath who stole condensed milk for the sake of Madhavendra Puri. 
This incident had been previously related by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. The same narration was again related by Lord Nityananda to all the devotees, and their transcendental bliss increased as they heard the story again. Walking and walking in this way, the devotees arrived at the city of Katak, where they remained for a day and saw the temple of Shakshi Gopal. Which temple did they see? When Nityananda Prabhu described all the activities of Sakshi Gopal, transcendental bliss increased in the minds of all the Vaishnavas. Everyone in the party was very anxious at heart to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Therefore, they hastily went on to Jagannath Puri. When they all arrived at a bridge called Ataranala, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, hearing the news of their arrival, sent two garlands with Govinda. Govinda offered the two garlands to Advaita Acharya and Nityananda Prabhu, and they both became very happy. Indeed, they began chanting the holy name of Krishna on that very spot. And in this way, dancing and dancing, Advaita Acharya and Nityananda Prabhu reached Jagannath Puri. Then, for the second time, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sent garlands through Surup Damodar and other personal associates. Thus, they went forward, sent by the son of Mother Sachi. You notice here, the mention is of these loving exchanges. Dadati pratigurnati guyam akyati prachiti. Bhunte bo jayate chaiva shadviram priti lakshanam. Priti lakshanam. This exchange of devotees between, the exchange of love between the devotees, they're giving garlands. Nobody else in Silicon Valley gets garlands. Nobody. <laughs> This is a rare thing. I mean, what is a flower garland anyway? What is a flower for anyway? It's for making garlands. I mean, the bees like them too, but you know, these things are going on. But devotees collect flowers. Not many people take the time. It, it's done in a haphazard way. When somebody's very sick, someone will call up the florist and say, yeah, how much is that? Okay, there's the $79.95 and the 40. Give me the $27 one. <laughs> I send it on down to, you know, and then they show up in the hospital. That's kind of an exchange of love. But when someone takes the time to make a garland, to string a garland, you have to sit there and think of your beloved. Who am I making this for? And then t all the labor that goes into a flower, a flower garland, just to go put it around their neck, it's an exchange of love. And you'll see this is going on. Prashadam is being exchanged. Garlands are taken to the, the various devotees. And... They're offered in, in, in a certain way to certain devotees. This is the, the ornament of devotees. It's this Vaishnava etiquette and how they recognize the differences among the devotees and they have these loving exchanges among themselves. That's the real nectar of life. Then, for the second time, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was sent garlands through Sarup Damodar and other personal associates. Thus, they went forward, sent by the son of Mother Shachi. When the devotees from Bengal reached Lake Narendra, Surup Damodar and the others met them and offered them the garlands given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When the devotees finally reached the Lion Gate, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard the news and personally went to meet them. Then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all his devotees visited Lord Jagannath. Finally, accompanied by them all, he returned to his own residence. Vani Nath Roy and Kashi Mishra then brought a large quantity of prasadam, and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu distributed it with his own hand and fed them all. In the previous year, everyone had his own particular residence, and the same residences were again offered. Thus, they all went to take rest. Just like when we go to Mayapur, Navina Nirada Prabhu gives us our residences back so we can stay there in the Dham. And he makes so many other arrangements so that we can be there. Thank you to Naveen and Eric. And also, for these yatras and parikrams in the holy places, the day after, in fact, the very day or even before the yatra is over, Shraddha and Mukara Vinda are always, already talking about how to do the next year. I, I was meeting with them in Jagannath Puri talking and the, what, the yatra wasn't over yet <laughs> and we were talking about 
reserving for the next year. It's already reserved, by the way. Better sign up fast, because it was life-changing. We'll never be the same after going to these places and sitting in Srivasangam and seeing year after year how we think, can it actually happen again? That little place, Srivasangam, it looks like, you know, if you were driving by in a super highway, you wouldn't even notice it. Practically, wouldn't even notice it driving down the little road to, uh, in Mayapur. It, it, it seems so small and insignificant, but it's the epicenter of the Sankirtan movement. And when we go there every year, we're, I'm always thinking, you know, yeah, it was last year, the magic happened, but what, could it actually happen again? And every time it happens, then you realize it's something descending. It's nothing that we're doing, but we're just showing up, which is a, a big deal. The four continuous months, four four continuous months, all the devotees remained there and enjoyed chanting Hare Krishna with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Four months! Enjoyed chanting Hare Krishna, four months. We got 25 minutes left. <laughs> As in the previous year, they all washed the Gunicha temple when the time for Rathiatra arrived. The inhabitants of Kalina Gram delivered silken ropes to, the Lord, to Lord Jagannath and, as previously, they all danced before the Lord's e a car. After dancing a great deal, they all went to a nearby garden and took rest beside a lake. And by the way, the devotees last night were dancing a great deal. And I saw that that was the most... I, saw, I was watching the eyes of the audience, one of my favorite things to do, and they were watching. You were dancing just really nicely. And the, 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 the dancing really catches me because... Who really dances in Silicon Valley? I mean, maybe they go in a club and they're like... <laughs> but it's all ego. It's all ego, like how am I looking, you know? They practice before, in front of a mirror. The devotees don't practice in front of a mirror. They, they come out and they, they just start dancing. And that little girl last night, I don't know whose daughter she is, but she was standing there. Vinay Prabhu's daughter was there. But, but you know, it's, it's a very attractive, the dancing. Who gets to dance? And I was thinking, you know, no wonder people are a little surprised when they see that. Even in Navadweep, when the devotees came out of Srivasangam and started dancing, everyone was like, you can't do that. <laughs> we don't do that. That's a little too much, this dancing and singing out loud. It's like, hey, keep it down. You know, go call the cops. These guys, th this is not Hinduism. It's, it's a little outlandish. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's whole movement is outlandish. So don't be surprised if you get these kinds of reactions from people. A Brahmin named Krishnadas, who was a resident of Radha Desh and a servant of Lord Nityananda's, was a very fortunate person. It was Krishnadas who filled a great water pot and poured it over the Lord while he was taking his bath. The Lord was greatly satisfied by this. The remnants of food offered to the Lord at Balagandi, then arrived in great quantity, and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all his devotees ate it. As in the previous year, the Lord, with all the devotees, saw the Rathiatra festival and the Hera Panchami festival as well. Advaita Acharya then extended an invitation to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and there was a great rainstorm connected with that incident. Uh, so many beautiful pastimes, anyway. All these episodes have been elaborately described by Srila Vrindavanas Thakur. Then one day, Srivas Thakur extended an invitation to the Lord. The Lord's favorite vegetables were cooked by Malini Devi, the wife of Srivas Thakur. She devotedly considered herself a maidservant of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but in affection, she was just like a mother. All the chief devotees headed by Chandrasekhar Acharya Ratna would extend invitations to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu periodically. At the end of the four-month Chaturmasya period, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu again consulted with Nityananda Prabhu daily in a solitary place. No one could understand what their consultation was about. Then Srila Advaita Acharya said something to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu through gestures and read some poetic passages which no one understood. Seeing the face of Advaita Acharya, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu smiled. Understanding that the Lord had accepted the proposal, Advaita Acharya started to dance. No one knew what Advaita Acharya requested or what the Lord ordered. 
After embracing the Acharya, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bade him farewell. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then told Nityananda Prabhu, Please hear me, O holy man. I now request something of you. Kindly grant my request. Do not come to Jagannath Puri every year, but stay in Bengal and fulfill my desire. Purport. The mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is to spread the only medicine effective in this fallen age of Kali, the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Let's just take that one sentence for a minute. It says here, you don't have to switch it over if it's too difficult. The mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is to spread the only medicine effective in this fallen age of Kali, the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. That's the mission. And it's so important that <clears throat> those who are engaged in doing this and organize their lives around the principle are able to have a real balanced spiritual program. You have to have both. In other words, you have to be working for this spreading the medicine. And your practice of reading and chanting and so on should go to inspire you to distribute more. And when you're distributing, you should be inspired to come back and read and chant more. Both things have to be there. Many people then want to become unless it's their service, some great scholar, learn Sanskrit, go off and sit and just read esoteric books. It doesn't work. In fact, practically everyone who learns Sanskrit <laughs> leaves the Krishna consciousness movement. So be careful. <laughs> because they start thinking, oh, I, you know, I, I know everything. We meet people all the time. Hi, sir, how are you? I know everything. It's like, all right, I'll see you later then. Um, <laughs> don't know everything. But go out and try to spread Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission and then come back and hear and chant with the intention of becoming inspired to go out and give it to more people to spread the medicine. This is the mood of Prahlad Maharaj that we heard earlier this morning and it's Prabhupada's mood also that give the medicine. And everything that goes on in that way is, will help balance your spiritual life. Story. I talked to Bhutatma Prabhu. He was the temple president when I first joined in 1973. Great devotee. Really brilliant. He wrote a book, actually. It's a nice bridge book. It's called The Eye of the Storm. I just revisited that. Uh, he has, he, he's a, a learned scholar. He, he has a PhD in something, psychology or something. And he wrote this Christian conscious book. In any case, he was in Fresno, California. Everyone knows where that is, right? And he had a temple there. So there was a temple in San Francisco and one in Fresno. And the Fresno temple was doing okay. And, but then Keshava Das, who was the temple president in San Francisco, wanted to uh, catch the book distribution train. He was, he was, it was just exploding at that time because the great Budi Manta started going out and selling Krishna books on the street in San Francisco. No one thought it could be done. Everyone said it couldn't be done. But Budi Manta said, I'm going to try. And he went out. Of course, there was some breakthrough. They took the book out, and they were pulled into a gas station, and the attendant came over. They used to have attendants back then. And he filled up the gas, and then they said, hey, look at this book. And the guy got attracted. They said, just take this instead of the gas money. And the guy said, okay, that's a deal. <laughs> and they did their first Krishna book. So then Booty started going out on the street with his books. He was like a great warrior, and he sold four books, and then five books, and six books on the street. And then the fever spread throughout the temple. And Keshwar, the temple president, he said, I'm going too. I want to go. So they needed a new temple president. So they closed down the Fresno temple, and they brought Bhutatma and all the devotees from there to the San Francisco temple. So Bhutatma was telling about his first days there in the uh, San Francisco temple. And I got off into... Budi Manta, and I forgot what I was going to say about Bhutatma. What was that? Huh? Before the book. Now I'm really lost. Now we're going way back. Oh, I'm so sorry. No. Why did I bring up Bhutatma? Oh, he was telling a story. Uh, I'm dead in the water here. 
it'll come back to me, I'm sorry. I, got, I, I interrupted my own thought process. <laughs> yeah, Bhutatma was telling me about... Join the temple, Bhutatma was there. Oh, right. Okay, so just around that time, traveling Sankirtan was starting up. And the devotees were going out in vans. This was the first that was invented in San Francisco, actually, from Keshava. He got this big uh, truck, like a school bus, and they converted it into a traveling Sankirtan. So the devotees would go out. But then this controversy arose. They said, you're not eating prashadam, because they would go out for weeks at a time, right? And they say, you're not at the temple. Prabhupada said, only take prashadam. Where are you getting prashadam from? So this was a concern. Nobody lived outside, nobody. And if they did, they lived really close to the temple, and they, everyone was dependent on the whole temple schedule from morning till night, and also they would only take the temple prashadam. That was it. So now the traveling sankirtan goes out, and the devotees are going around, and there's this controversy. Some are saying, you know, you're, you're not getting prashadam. So Keshava and Bhutatma went to resolve this by talking to Prabhupada, who was in Los Angeles. So they went to meet Prabhupada in Los Angeles, and they told him what the dilemma was. And Prabhupada said, you, uh, I hesitate to say what he actually said. <laughs> the essence was, you go on preaching. It's the most important thing. And you can, as you're going on, you can take anything, you can offer it, and Krishna will accept it, and the fire of Sankirtan you can take. Uh, he was immediately responsive to the, the needs of the traveling Sankirtan devotees and said that you can take, you know, wherever you go, whatever you need to do to keep preaching. He said just, and he made it sound like the cartels, he said just keep this big Sankirtan going. That was the mood. So one who has that mood that, as Prabhupada expresses in this first line, the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was to spread the only medicine effective in this fallen age of Kali, the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. We should have that realization and mood that it is the medicine, and as we're giving it, we're also taking it. He continues, following the orders of his mother, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was residing at Jagannath Puri, and the devotees were coming to see him. However, the Lord felt that this message must be spread very elaborately in Bengal, and in his absence, there was not a second person capable of doing it. Consequently, the Lord requested Nityananda Prabhu to stay there and broadcast the message of Krishna consciousness. The Lord also entrusted a similar preaching responsibility to Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami. Nityananda Prabhu was requested not to come every year to Jagannath Puri, although seeing Lord Jagannath greatly benefits everyone. Does this mean that the Lord was refusing Nityananda Prabhu a fortunate opportunity? No. One who is a faithful servant of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu must execute his order, even if one has to sacrifice going to Jagannath Puri to see Lord Jagannath there. Now, Navina Prabhu and I were talking about two devotees who were very um, foundational in the book distribution movement that started back around 1973. And their names are uh, Ruhini Sutta and Manidar. and Manidar. Ruhini Sutta and Manidar. When the Sankirtan newsletter first started coming out, their names appeared regularly on the top because they were so dedicated. How dedicated were they? Practically all the preachers in the movement every year would go to see Srila Prabhupada in Mayapur. That's just what you did. In fact, we rented an airplane, a jet. We got our own jet. It was only devotees on it. That was how many devotees were ready to sign up to go to, and Prabhupada said it. He said, drop everything, come to Mayapur, and meet here and discuss amongst yourselves how to create unity and diversity, how to come together to spread Krishna consciousness. But one year, and they were receiving an award one year for their top the distribution in the world, and they didn't come. And Prabhupada was giving the awards, and then he asked where they were, and they said, Prabhupada, they didn't want to stop their service to come. And what did Prabhupada say? That is very advanced. That is very advanced. He gave out his own Give him the microphone. 
third over. Hare Krishna. So Srila Prabhupada was giving out the award, which was uh, two pairs of silver cartels, his own cartels, with engraving on it as a price. But they didn't come to pick up the price. Because so they were still distributing. They didn't yeah. want to leave the field of battle, right? They did 511 and 512 Mahan big books, respectively, in one week. So they, they were the top scorers in the marathon. But they stayed back, so Prabhupada said that is very advanced. So that principle, these things are, are the subtleties of devotional service. S sometimes the devotees bend the rules. Lord Chaitanya told Lord Yananda, don't come, and he came. Then he told some devotees, come, and they didn't come. <laughs> Nityananda Prabhu was requested not to come every year to Jagannath Puri, although seeing Lord Jagannath greatly benefits everyone. Does this mean that the Lord was refusing Nityananda Prabhu a fortunate opportunity? No. One who is a faithful servant of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu must execute his order, even if one has to sacrifice going to Jagannath Puri to see Lord Jagannath there. In other words, it is a greater fortune to carry out Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's order than to satisfy one's senses by seeing Lord Jagannath. Preaching Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's cult throughout the world is more important than staying in Vrindavan or Jagannath Puri for one's own personal satisfaction. Spreading Krishna consciousness is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission. Therefore, his sincere devotees must carry out his desire. Priti vite ache jata nagaradi gram sarvatra prachar hoibe monanam. The devotees of Lord Chaitanya must preach Krishna consciousness in every village and every town in the world. That will satisfy the Lord. It is not that one should act whimsically for his own personal satisfaction. This order comes down through the parampara system, and the spiritual master presents these orders to the disciples so that he can spread the message of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It is the duty of every disciple to carry out the order of the bona fide spiritual master and spread Lord Chaitanya's mission message all over the world. That's what creates service. The Sankirtan is a service machine. It creates all kinds of services for everybody. It's like when a, uh, a governor or a senator or someone is campaigning for office. They say, I guarantee you jobs, 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 if I'm elected. And this is, this is the idea. Everyone wants a job in Sri Taitanya Mahaprabhu's mission. And that's the most fortunate position. Find yourself a job in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission, some job you can do. It may even start small. You may think this is insignificant little job, but it may turn out to be the most important. Every, of course, it's all important. As Giri Rajswami was pointing out recently, that everyone's service done sincerely is significant. And he, he recounted the story of Lord Ramachandra and everybody's building a bridge over to Lanka. And Hanuman was throwing in big boulders. And one much smaller devotee was just throwing in little grains of sand. And Hanuman was like, uh, could you move? <laughs> We're actually doing something. And Ramachandra corrected him and said, no, actually, his is as valuable as yours. And then he reminded him also, Kiri Rajmar said, that I'm the one making him float. So don't... <laughs> So, so don't get too puffed up about your service. It's all important. And speaking of which, I included a quote in this little booklet, in this handy little booklet that you're welcome to take home. There's a quote from Srila Prabhupada that you'll find on page number seven in the middle, where it says, Srila Prabhupada on Lord Chaitanya's plan. Prabhupada writes in a letter to Shukadev in 1972, I like this idea of distributing books and preaching. That is Lord Chaitanya's plan. And because you are doing it so nicely, you are already making the greatest contribution. So what need there is for some special instruction from me? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's order is out there. He said, spread the Krishna conscious movement. Give the medicine to other people. Uh, if you don't happen to get some very personal instruction from your guru that you have to do this or that, it's open. It's clear. It helps spread the medicine. If you jump in and start throwing you know, sand or rocks or whatever you, can, whatever you can manage to carry into the water, 
you're in. You're in. The, it, it's an open order to everybody. Spread this all over the world. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did it. And Prabhupada said, when he was asked about who would become next gurus in ISKCON, he said, whoever understands this. <laughs> That's what he said, who becomes the next guru. He said, whoever understands the order of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and whoever understands the order of his guru, which is to spread this. Take your life and use it to spread the medicine all the world. He said, someone who can understand that, then he's the guru. Because that's, that's what it is. It, it's about creating jobs and it's about making, uh, connecting everyone so that they can also be part of, the, of helping Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spread his mission all over the world. That's, that is Mahaprabhu's program. Yes. Hare Krishna Prabhu, well you just read the thing that you have to follow, sorry, you just read the thing that um, you know you have to follow what Guru Maharaj says and you know keep it as a life and soul. I was just thinking in my mind that I've never personally asked my Guru Maharaj about what uh, should I personally be doing but um, you know Malini was sharing with me that uh, he told her whatever whatever pleases you is what she should be doing. And um, so I thought that is what I have taken too. So I was thinking in my mind that whatever pleases um, Prabhuji is what is my instruction. And as soon as I thought about it, um, the sentence that you read that, uh, so what need, so then I, you know, um, you know, it just says, it reiterates that it says that, so what need there is for some special instruction separately to me. So I was just thinking that I was just asking a question in my mind now and I just get answered. <laughs> Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah, and that, that what, uh, Srila Radhanath Maharaj told you was what he tells everyone locally because he, 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 that's how he, he sees the, how everyone has to cooperate and be engaged and therefore he promotes that promotes that wherever he goes that everyone should work together in a cooperative way he's not trying to corner the market or something like that <laughs> He's trying to spread Lord Chaitanya's market everywhere. And it's like, you engage, you engage, you, whatever way that, that it's connected, that somebody's connected in the right way, uh, that's good enough. That's good enough. That's what's actually. Now we have five minutes, and I still haven't gotten to get out her pundit. I'm so sorry. It's unconscionable. Let me just jump ahead a little bit. There's so much nectar in here. You know what we should do? We just shut down everything and stay in and read Chaitanya Charitamrita for a few weeks. What happened to all those people? And then the CNN will be flying around with a helicopter. It's like they're barricaded in there. They're reading Chaitanya Charitamrita. They won't come out. It's like all the people put down their weapons around the world to watch and see what's happening with the Chaitanya Charitamrita reading. <laughs> There's just so, in this chapter, this, the Lord attempts to go to Vrindavan. Next time we'll make a run at this. We'll go through the whole chapter because there's so many instructions in here that are important. And... Goranga karuna koro ami dina hina jane O sammo patita prabhu din dhane Here, Gadadha Pandit. When Gadadhar Pandit started to go with the Lord, this is the Lord attempting to go over Vrindavan and finally decides to go. Because everyone kept saying, eh, it's a little cold right now. And then they say, you wait for a little longer. And finally he, he, he got their permission and he left. When Gadadhar Pandit started to go with the Lord, he was forbidden, this is text number 130, to come and was asked not to give up his vow of Kshetra Sanyas. Purport, when one takes Kshetra Sanyas, he leaves his household life and goes to a place of pilgrimage devoted to Lord Vishnu. Such places include Purushottam, Jagannath Puri, Navadit Dham, and Mathura Dham. The Kshetra Sanyasi lives in these places alone or with his family. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur considers Kshetra Sanyas to be the preferable Vanaprastha situation in the age of Kali. 
Sarvabhauma Bhattacharya lived in this way, and he has been called a Kshetra Sannyasi. That is a sannyasi living in Jagannath Puri. Text 131. When he was requested to return to Jagannath Puri, Gadadhar Pandit told the Lord, Wherever you are staying is Jagannath Puri. Let my so called Kshetra Sannyas go to hell. <laughs> when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked Gadadhar Pandit to remain at Jagannath Puri and engage in Gopinath's service, Gadadhar Pandit replied, One renders service to Gopinath a million times simply by seeing your lotus feet. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then said, if you abandon his service, it will be my fault. It is better that you remain here and render service. That will be my satisfaction. The pundit replied, do not worry. All the faults will be on my head. I shall not accompany you, but shall go alone. So in other words, he's denying whatever the Lord's saying. And this is out of love, because we said before he's submissive, but he can't give up the association of the Lord. He's made this vow, I won't leave Tota Gopinath, I'll stay only in this area the rest of my life. That's a heavy vow, especially back then. Nowadays, who, you know, people don't follow vows anymore, practically, but the, these, this was important. And now he just, he can't leave the Lord alone. And now he says, don't worry, it's my fault. It won't come on you. And he said, I'm not really with, traveling with you. I'm just going to walk behind you. <laughs> so, I shall go to see Shachimata, but I shall not go for your sake. I shall be responsible for the abandoning of my vow in service to Gopinath. Thus, Gadadhar Pandit Goswami traveled alone, but when they all arrived at Katak, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu called him, and he went, in, and he went into the Lord's company. No one can understand the loving intimacy between Gadadhar Pandit and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Gadadhar Pandit gave up his vow of, and service to Gopinath just as one gives up a piece of straw. Purport, just to get Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's association, Gadadhar Pandit gave up his life's vow to engage in Gopinath's service. This kind of loving affection can be understood only by very confidential devotees. Ordinarily, no one can understand its purport. Gadadhar Pandit's behavior was very pleasing to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord took his hand and spoke to him, displaying the anger of love. You have abandoned Gopinath's service and broken your vow to live in Puri. All this is now complete because you have come so far. Your wanting to go with me is simply a desire for sense gratification. In this way, you are breaking two religious principles, and because of this, I am very unhappy. If you want my happiness, please return to Nilachala, and you will, you will simply condemn me if you stay, say any more about this matter. Saying this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu got into a boat, and Gadadhar Pandit immediately fell down unconscious. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ordered Sarvabhom Bhattacharya to take Gadadhar Pandit with him. The Bhattacharya told Gadadhar Pandit, get up, such are the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You should know that Lord Krishna himself violated his own promise just to keep the promise of Grandfather Bhishma. Quote, intending to make my promise true, Lord Krishna broke his own promise not to take up a weapon at Kurukshetra. With his outer garment falling off, Lord Sri Krishna jumped from his chariot, picked up a wheel, and came running at me to kill me. Indeed, he rushed at me like a lion going to kill an elephant. And he caused the whole earth to tremble. Sim similarly, tolerating separation from you, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has protected your vow with great endeavor. In this way, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya received Gadadhar Pandit. Then both of them, very much grief-stricken, returned to Jagannath Puri, Nilachala. We saw how effective is the association of devotees, especially when they're coming together to hear and chant, spread the Krishna consciousness movement. We, in our yatra in Puri, uh, Madhavananda Prabhu had a special way with the kids. He brought uh, Gita Priya and Avantika especially. He, he noticed them. He would, in every class, he would bring them closer. And I saw that when uh, Gita Priya left, the day she had to leave, Day after day, more devotees were leaving the Dom. And it was very hard for them to leave, actually, because there was such a, 
a connection there. She was, her she, eyes, tears were, were pouring from her eyes, and she was very upset. And we saw her crying all the way down, and then Malini told us later that she cried all the way to Bhuvaneshwar. It's like an hour drive, like sobbing, because she didn't want to leave. It's like, why do we have to go to work? <laughs> Malini would say, why do we have to leave? We have to, we have to go home, we have to go to work. Why do we have to work? Why can't we stay in Jagannath Puri? <laughs> and we, we should develop such attachment to the devotees. Not that we have to stay in the Dom, but we should feel like that when the devotees leave. We should feel heart-stricken. We, we should be attached to them. And then we should go on with our service, in whatever way we have to, a feeling separation from the devotees. This is... Uh, the example of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all his devotees. And when the loving exchanges are going on between the devotees, they're taking care of one another, because this material world is a hard place. It's hard time here. It's hard time. People get thrown in prison and they go, you're doing some hard time. They put you in a, you know, in a very isolated place where people are, are, are not nice to you because they're, they're trying to punish you and so forth. This material world's like that. So don't be surprised if you feel a little overwhelmed living here. It's meant to be like that. Somebody just got thrown in prison. They, they were, everyone was saying, you know, how's it going to be for them? And they were saying, oh, it's going to be really hard because, you know, they, they, they want you to suffer. <laughs> so the material world is Dukalaya Mashashvatam. So we need, we have to have the, the support of the devotees. We have to have the encouragement of the devotees. We have to reach out to one another and realize these are the rarest people on earth. And even if they mess up, I mean, Krishna even says in the Bhagavad Gita, if somebody messes up, apichet, even if they do that, sutaracharo, they're great souls. You have to consider them to be sadhus. And you have to uh, reach out to them and, and help them. This is the mood of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all his devotees. So we pray to Sri Gadadhar Pandit on this uh, day of his appearance day that we can uh, assume the mood of service to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he had, that we can also uh, develop this kind of attachment for the devotees and for the Holy Dham and for spreading the mess medicine of the Sankirtan movement all over the world. Srila Gadadhar Pandit Ki Jai. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Gaur Bhakti Vrindhi Ki Jai. Go Pray Manane. Vancha Kalpaturubascha Krupasana Bevacha Patitanam Pavani Bio Vaishnav Debio Namo Namaha. Natchari Armarman. Natchari Armarman. Natchari Armarman. Natchari Armarman. Hey, Natchari Armarman. Natchari Armarman. Natchari Armarman. Natchari Armarman.